My name is Mark Cole. Um, here we are at Zamperini Field, Torrance, California. I grew up uh, really close to here in Redondo Beach, California. Kind of was always interested in aviation and flight from a young age. Uh, airplanes and rocket ships and tractors and ships and trains. Not, you know, not unlike a, a lot of little boys, that kind of stuff always fascinated me. And it kind of fascinates me to this day. I used to work in the surf and outdoor apparel industry. And for a long time, that was a really fun industry to be in. Um, I'm a passionate surfer and outdoorsman. Uh, I love hiking and camping. I ride my mountain bike super often. Um, so those type of outdoor activities and outdoor sports really appealed to me. And I kind of, by a little bit of luck and some good choices and I don't know, preparation and opportunity, uh, fell into that work as a full-time career. Um, I worked at a few companies, one of them called Rip Curl, uh, one of them called uh, Hippie Tree. I knew I wanted to be a pilot um, for a long time, but it's just a question of finding the time and allocating the resources in terms of, you know, it's, it's a financial investment. So whether you need to save some money or figure out how you're gonna pay for it, it's definitely an important consideration. Growing up in LA, you know, you hear so much about the traffic and the congestion. It was really cool to be able to just take off right out of here 10 minutes from my house and fly over everybody in traffic, whether I'm going to San Diego or going snowboarding up in Big Bear or up to Ventura or Oxnard. Um, aviation really opens up a lot of possibilities in terms of how many cool things you can get done in one day. Uh, so I've had a lot of experience doing stuff like that, um, coupling my aviation interests with my other interests and flying up to Mammoth and going snowboarding or what have you. There's just so much that can be done and the perspective while you're in the air is, it's pretty different than, you know, driving different places. And the Sling's a really cool airplane. I like how advanced the design is. Um, it's kind of a no-brainer coming off of a 172 that was probably built in the 80s or 90s versus a plane that you know has a little over a thousand hours on the airframe, which is nothing in the long run. It's been exciting flying with the glass cockpit. It makes a lot of things easier. Also from kind of a environmental perspective, it's really impressive how efficient the Rotax engine is and how little fuel this plane sips compared to a Cessna with a, a Lycoming engine. Um, that's nice from an environmental point of view, and as well as it's nice, obviously, if uh, the school's paying for less fuel, they're gonna be able to get you through a full program uh, for significantly less cost than some of the competitors. When I was kind of deciding what my next move was, when I was still working at my old job, I was like, okay, the aviation thing is just looking nicer and nicer based on the pilot shortage, based on the opportunities that a couple of my friends that have already been into the commercial flying realm have been telling me about. I was like, okay, this is starting to get a little silly. Why am I putting off this possible career? I've, I love flying, I'm pretty, pretty good at it. Like this seems like a, a natural fit. So I started looking into the full-time programs and what's out there. I looked at the program at Long Beach. I was like, okay, at least I could drive there. It's a little farther than I would like, but not the end of the world. Um, Definitely got a bit of a pyramid scheme vibe over there. Like, you know, everybody was in it for themselves and that's fine. I, I understand how people are incentivized. Shout out to all the flight instructors that are trying to go to the airlines. I'm sure I'm gonna be one of those flight instructors very shortly. There's a couple instructors here at the Sling Pilot Academy that are trying to go to the airlines. And then there's a, a couple instructors who are just guys that love to fly and that love to train people. And that's like really hard to find. It's, um, it's so impressive because these guys are so focused on safety and instilling good habits rather than just being like, do you meet the minimum requirements? Yes, okay, we're done. It's like, no, these guys are passionate about flying. That's what they've dedicated their lives to. And it's, it's we're so lucky to be able to learn from people like that. Basically, the guys who founded this place are, are more entrepreneurs than, than anything else. They saw a need in the market for an academy that could train pilots and do it better than anyone else is doing it. So the first thing I did is went and checked it out and talked to the people here and they were super friendly and super flexible. You know, they were just like willing to totally work with me based on any concerns or, you know, flexibility issues or scheduling. They just wanted, and I was like, whoa, these people are new. They fly these cool new airplanes. Um, they're gonna be incentivized to make sure that I have a good experience. As one of the first people in the program, versus an, ex an existing established uh, campus that kind of like could take me or leave me. They've got a line of people out the door to get in there and get out and 
They're not really gonna care about each person's progress as much as a place that's new, like the Sling Pilot Academy would. It's actually significantly less money too, so that played a, played a big role, but um, those two things were kind of like the reasons why I was like, you know what, I'm ready to do this, let's make it happen. I don't know if this is true, but people definitely call it the most congested airspace in the world, in the country. Um, it definitely feels like that sometimes, and having the experience of knowing this airspace, knowing the LAX, LAX Class Bravo, um, really helps when you're trying to learn new things to come in with that base knowledge because some of the people that have twice as many hours as me, they're not used to talking to SoCal controllers. They're not used to VFR flight following. Why do you need that? And it's like, because we'd like to stay alive today. So, so in terms of the financial side of uh, going through your pilot training, um, it's definitely a huge commitment. And I really empathize with, with people that it holds them back from going further in their training because it held me back for a really long time. Um, you know, I paid for all my pilot training out of my own pocket. Uh, I, I, I would say I wish I had wealthy parents, but maybe I do have wealthy parents, but they, they kind of believe in uh, making you obtain your, you know, I got an undergraduate degree from UC Irvine, uh, which they helped me pay for, which was super cool. And I feel really lucky because I know plenty of people that their parents don't have the savings or the ability or resources to, to pay for a college degree. So when it came to doing my pilot training, my parents basically, you know, they told me I was on my own and I, I felt fine about that because if it was something I really wanted to do, it's a big investment. And uh, I wouldn't want anybody going into this route or going down this path uh, because they kind of wanted to do it, you know? Uh, when it comes down to it, when you, when you get in these little plans and you, you take off, you're really taking your life into your own hands and uh, you're also responsible for your passenger's safety as well. So I don't really want any pilots up there that aren't fully committed to this, this uh, path. Um, and having to make that financial commitment is a, a really good way of weeding out people that aren't ready to step in uh, or dive in head first, I guess you could say. And then in terms of the tuition for the program, I had already mentioned that it's significantly less than any of the competitors that I've seen, um, which is a huge advantage because you're flying such nicer equipment than most of the competitors too. So it's kind of a no brainer to do a program like this. Uh, it is still a big investment. And so I, I've obtained a loan to, to pay for it. Um, and the loan seems, you know, it seems like a ton of money at the time, but then if you start looking at your career earnings potential and what you're gonna be paid once you're in the airlines or flying charter operations or whatever your choosing path might be, um, that money starts to seem a little bit less significant than just looking at a big lump sum. So I know people who fly for the airlines, I know people who fly charter operations, everybody seems to love their life. Um, haven't really talked to any pilots that hate their life, so that's a, a good indication. Uh, I love traveling. I love, you know, going to all kinds of different places in the world to go surf or see other sites. So, I mean, I'm really looking forward to the traveling aspect. Um, I love photography. So it's, it's, it seems like a career that is really going to work well for me personally. Um, I used to work in an office. It's not that it's not a terrible thing working in an office. A lot of people say it's, you know, the worst thing ever, but, uh, if you enjoy what you're doing, working in an office, isn't that bad. That being said, having a career where every day has the potential to be different is something that really appeals to me. Um, monotonous routines are, can be less fun than, uh, you know, jumping in a cockpit and going somewhere new and cool and, and always learning and always expanding the potential, you know, of your knowledge. It's, uh, it's really appealing to me. So I'm looking most forward to that.